Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I decided that Enceladus, the moon of Saturn, would be the best place to get resources from in order to refuel vessels that will travel around the solar system. Uh, but I wasn't entirely sure that Kerbal Space Program agreed with me and so here I am launching a resource satellite to figure that out on my Kasei rocket. The boosters had methane and oxygen in them. The core is hydrogen and oxygen in two stages. It's 8.4 meters in diameter. It's basically SLS, but better. Uh, anyway, we uh, have the separation of the first stage and the really big engine on the second stage. Ultimately, I find out though that I didn't put MLI layers on this stage of the probe, even though it's a methane and oxygen stage, so that's a problem. I demonstrate that I could have gotten over to Enceladus with the Delta V available. In fact, we have about 900 meters per second to spare, but having no MLI layers means that there's going to be boil off on the stage and we're going to lose Delta V. And this was done during a live stream, so I didn't want to redo the whole launch, especially since I was mainly trying to get the in situ resource utilization unit, the ISRU unit, tested out here. Uh, so I am going to just cheat the probe into orbit around Enceladus after demonstrating that that launch would have worked out, except for the lack of insulation. So here I cheated the probe into orbit and scanned the surface of Enceladus to find the resources. We're looking for ore in this case, but really what Enceladus has is water. But the ISRU unit is configured to drill for ore, which is the stock resource. Uh, and we do have a lot of ore here, and then it can convert the ore into hydrogen and oxygen, which is what we would really do is take the water ice and convert it into hydrogen and oxygen by splitting it. And then the hydrogen can be used for nuclear systems, NTRs, and then the oxygen potentially can actually be used for ion systems. Normally we think of ion systems using xenon gas or argon or krypton or something like that, but they don't need to. Uh, it's just that oxygen doesn't get as much efficiency. Oxygen gets about 2,000 seconds of specific impulse and not as much thrust. But we can get it pretty easily compared to xenon or krypton or stuff like that. Here I've got reactors from KSB Interstellar. Those will be powering the ISRU unit and the drills. Though I think the nuclear engine that I'm using on this lander for Enceladus uh, could provide enough power. Uh, it is a bimodal reactor. In other words, it provides both, both the thrust and the electrical power. Here's the ISR unit. I made the lower portion of the lander into a donut so that the stuff could fit in. Uh, that may or may not be the best thing. Uh, out in the outer planets around Saturn where Enceladus is, it's very cold, so there's not naturally much boil off, but putting a reactor in there could create some boil off. Now, I needed some RCS thrusters that would work with just hydrogen, so here I am adding hydrogen gas thrusters to my RCS configurations in the Shear Strut engine pack so that I can just use the hydrogen boil off as our thrusters. Uh, so that we can maneuver in space. Here I'm adding the ion unit, and in this case I just went with an ion unit that uses xenon gas for now. I didn't think of the oxygen option until later, but that seems like a good idea. Basically, we've got water all over the place in the solar system, and if you can split the water and then you can run the systems with the NTRs running on the hydrogen and the ions running on the oxygen, that's a pretty good way to go because uh, like in this case, you need at least a nuclear engine, if not a hydrolox engine, to land on the surfaces. Uh, you can't land with the ion engines, but the ion engines are really nice for traveling between places. In fact, it was so nice, it said it had 24,000 meters per second of delta V here, that I decided to cheat it into space to see if it was lying to me. And it turns out it wasn't. It was actually 24,000 meters per second of delta V. So that's pretty darn good. I, I made that smaller before launching it because I didn't want to overburden the rocket. I was hoping to get some Delta V out of the second stage here uh, to start us off on our way to Saturn before the ion engines did their thing because the ion engines take too darn long. And we've got units that have basically realistic-ish thrust right now, so they take many days to deliver their Delta V. And in order to make that work out for us, we need to be able to time warp while using the ion engines. And so they need to be configured for KSP Interstellar. Uh, there is persistent thrust, but I've never gotten persistent thrust to work right. KSP Interstellar is the only one that I've gotten to work right 
with ion engines during time warp, and so that's the situation we have here. Now, unfortunately, on this occasion, I didn't have enough delta V out of the second stage for us to really get away from Earth very well. It's going to take a whole lot of cycling passes to try and boost up, and I decided that this would be entirely too tedious. And so I decided to redo the launch and get a little bit less from the ion stage, make it smaller, reduce how many ion units we have, reduce the size of the reactor and generator there, and take off some radiators, and then add a hydrolock stage. You can already see the hydrolock stage, and then Eventually, I decided that the hydrolock stage was not good enough. It wasn't giving me enough delta V, and so I swapped it out for a nuclear stage. So, for those keeping track, we now have three separate nuclear-powered stages. So that we've got an NTR lander on top, we've got a uh, reactor and generator powering an ion unit in the center, and then we will have the Fuji stage at the bottom here. The Fuji hydrogen stage has another nuclear engine. This is not ideal. Uh, so this is a mock-up, but uh, I'll try and make this all tighter and combine things together in a better way. There's no reason to have it like this. Uh, what I think I'll do is, instead of having a separate nuclear stage at the bottom, just fill up the lander. Right now, we're not filling up the lander at all, but we could just fill up the lander and use it as the initial boost stage, have the ion unit flipped around and dock to docking port on top, and that'll be much simpler than what we've got here. So right now we've got an empty bunch of hydrogen tanks at the top with the lander, and then we've got an extra hydrogen stage, which makes sort of no sense. Now the Fuji stage did have the benefit of having all sorts of stuff built in, like it captures the hydrogen and oxygen boil off. It has built in RCS thrusters. It actually has a full hydrolock system to complete orbit, even though I didn't fuel that up in this case because I didn't want to carry the liquid oxygen. So it's got smallish uh, hydrolox engines. I forget exactly what the thrust is, but uh, they help complete orbit so we don't have to turn on the nuclear system ahead of time before making orbit. In this case, I just turn on the nuclear system before making orbit. So after the second stage here runs out, uh, because it's not going to be able to bring us to orbit completely, I do activate the nuclear engine. In this case, the nuclear engine is a Timberwind 45. The one on the lander is actually one from NASA's 2019 uh, NTR proposal. This was to go to Mars with. The Mars mission would have three of those. They generate about 111 kilonewtons. And so that one is sized a little bit more appropriately. The Timberwind that we see here on the Fuji stage is a little bit better on the thrust to weight ratio perhaps a little bit optimistic because it uses pebble bed technology. So yeah, well, I'll trade off the pebble bed technology for making use of the lander instead and probably getting better efficiency just not having an extra stage. So it's probably just a wash anyway. All right, so here we have the final bit of the boost with the Fuji stage. And then we're gonna be back on the ions, but in this case, we are on escape already. So that's a good thing. Uh, so here, during time warp, I am using the ion engines on the way out. And even in solar orbit, I'm continuing to burn on my way up to Saturn orbit. So the orbit continues to get extended. And then I do a mid-course correction. Boosting up with the nuclear stage saves us from spiraling out with the ion engines, which would be tedious, and also delta V wise not very efficient. You basically have to double the amount of delta V that you're expecting to use in order to make the maneuver happen. So 3,000 for escape becomes 6,000 and stuff like that. So at that point, just using the hydrogen stage with the nuclear engine is a little bit better, or at least. Uh, doesn't cause me mind-numbing pain. So yeah, that's why I put the hydrogen stage. I'm sure NASA will love to cycle the ion stage out, especially just since there's no crew on this. This is just a refueler test. And the refueler right now is sized so that one run with it will fuel up 
one of my standard NTR tanks, which were also the standard tanks that were in the NASA architecture for NTR. Uh, they're about 45 tons each, uh, you know, dry mass plus propellant. And that propellant also includes the RCS propellant, which is um, HN Mon 3. We'll probably be using hydrogen gas instead, of course. Uh, so yeah, that is what set the size of the tanks on the lander. And we have two tanks because the bomb one is a donut shaped one that fits the reactor and the engine inside. Whereas I didn't want to perpetuate that for the entire thing. It's more efficient to have the upper tank not have the hole in the middle. Capturing into Saturn orbit's no big deal. It takes less delta V than capturing into Mars orbit because Saturn is so influential around here. Uh, so that's easy enough with a single ion pass. And then I did a burn at apoapsis to correct our inclination and also boost up to Enceladus's orbit. And then we have to bring our orbit down to Enceladus's orbit from the from the other end. So that takes a little bit of time. Right there you saw me plotting a potential capture on Enceladus and finding that I still needed 1,400 so I couldn't do it because the ion engine would take too long. Here we're much closer to Enceladus's orbit and so it's a little bit easier but I do do an ion engine burn going all the way in not just in Enceladus SOI. And ultimately, I still think that the ion engine unit is going too slow, so I just let it go and do the remainder of the capture with the lander itself, which has some of its hydrogen in there. And so we've got about 1,700 meters per second, which is plenty, actually. Uh, the total process for capturing around Saturn, boosting up, correcting inclination, and then matching to Enceladus's orbit is something like 7,000 meters per second tops, probably. Uh, that's more than enough if you plan 7,000 meters per second. Anyway, there's plenty of ore locations on Enceladus, thankfully, and so we get to land wherever, as long as it's not one of the rare uh, patches that doesn't have ore. And so I aim for a mostly equatorial location because I figure that's the best way to get away. The good thing about Enceladus is it doesn't take much Delta V to actually land or get off of it, which is why it's such an attractive place to get the water from and refuel from because it'll be easier to get off of it. Compared to, say, Europa, Europa is a much larger moon. It does have water, but it's going to take more Delta V to land and take off again from Europa. And also Europa, being in the Jupiter system, has a lot more radiation. So the radiation environment is horrid, like a thousand times worse than the radiation environment in, around Saturn. So we like Saturn. Saturn is a good place to do stuff. And Saturn's inner moons are fairly small, so they're easy to land on and get off of if you want to use resources. The one thing about Enceladus is, is we probably have to check whether there are any living things on Enceladus first. But that wasn't my problem here. Here we have a problem with the no ground contact status. Uh, I wasn't able to drill for the ore even though there's ore supposed to, that's supposed to be there and I was definitely landed. I checked in the tracking station it said landed on Enceladus and everything. I tried tilting various ways to see if that would help. That did not help. And I tried other methods. I ultimately decided to check the lander out on Phobos and so here I am cheating it into orbit around Phobos and then landing it on Phobos just to make sure. Phobos is very bumpy, so you know if it works on Phobos, it works pretty much anywhere usually. Uh, you can barely stay on Phobos' surface and get it landed. But here I am landing on Phobos, and that's more or less an RCS job. RCS was pretty powerful around Enceladus too. You can lift off of RCS off of Enceladus. So that's about the scale of it. It's like a ghillie, more or less. Anyway, so the surface harvester did work on Phobos, which left me puzzled. As it turns out, for some reason, real exoplanets was the culprit. When I removed real exoplanets, which I wanted because I wanted other star systems to go to in this particular save, but when I removed it, then the drilling worked on Enceladus. But otherwise, uh, nothing I did 
uh, made the drilling work on Enceladus. It was always no ground contact, no matter what. So anyway, at least I solved the problem and I was able to drill. However, the ratios of how much ore I got to how much it converted to hydrogen wasn't very good. Um, there's still boil off and you know, out here it's very cold around Saturn, but we do also have a very hot reactor in the middle. So I don't know how that all shakes up, but I guess that's what's hurting me here and causing boil off of the hydrogen. So that's a problem, but I think the solution to that is that instead of ore, I should just make it so that I'm drilling for water. Uh, the ore is actually hydrated hematite, and so it yields less hydrogen to begin with. And if instead I configure the drilling units and the converter unit to assume that we are using water, uh, then that'll be better for the hydrogen and will definitely give us more hydrogen than the boil off is consuming. Anyway, uh, here I was still messing around trying to figure out the no ground contact thing. I got the solution off camera, if you will, when I was not streaming or recording. So yeah, that was because it took a lot of testing to figure out that the culprit was real exoplanets. Oh well, I guess I don't get to have extra star systems in the save that I'm getting water from Enceladus in, but that's how the Kerbal crumbles, if you will. So anyway, as I tried to relocate the lander to a different biome to see if that biome would work better here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.